Neville, uh, before you were talking about the uh, statistics and risk element of your program, d uh, do you see that as a differentiator? Well, we do see it as a bit of a differentiator, uh, at least in reaction also post-financial crisis, in reaction to modeling failure. Uh, so your models can't predict by themselves. There has to be data analysis <coughs> and data that drives your models more than a theoretical construct about how financial data and financial instruments should behave. But you other gentlemen wouldn't say you're not data-driven, would you? Well, I'm certainly not as, as data-driven as Neville is. We obviously teach students how to handle large data sets and that sort of thing. It's, you know, they get assignments where they have large data sets to handle. Probably more, more, more driven by the sort of fundamental concepts in risk management and indeed what's changing as far as the regulatory environment is concerned. I would say um, about 30% of my um, risk management courses or risk management electives that I teach at Rotman is about regulation. I think data is obviously fundamental to our, uh, our program. Um, students are introduced to all the databases that Stern subscribes to when they first come in. They're given an introduction to what, what's available, what they want to do. And because students have to do a, a, a capstone project at the end of the uh, program, it's important that they're all familiar with the data and what is available. But I don't view theory and data as uh, in any sense conflicting. They are, in my, in, in my mind, both absolutely essential for a course. Theory is what helps us make sense of the world's data. Theory is a framework for understanding data. Yeah, just, just coming back to your data point, um, <clears throat> one of the things we have at Rotman is, is, is something we call the trading lab. We've just increased the size of the lab from 30 seats to 60 seats with an expansion of our building. And the lab's actually funded by the Bank of Montreal. And so when we're talking about data, our students learn how to use Bloomberg, how to use Reuters, and a lot, quite a lot of the assignments that we give the students. We don't, you know, you don't say, well, assume this, assume this, but you know, go out and you know, go to the trading lab and find out what the volatility of such and such is in order to do this assignment. Actually, Stanford poached our lab manager. And, and they've, they've recruited him to start Trading Lab, and that's in, indeed exactly what he's done at Stanford. We, we, uh, we have a small one, much smaller than, um, we have about, <coughs> I think, eight Bloomberg terminals and screens. So we don't have a Trading Lab uh, at, uh, at, at Stern. What we have, tons of data sets. We subscribe to almost every data set under the Wharton uh, Research Database System. And we have a volatility lab that uh, was set up by uh, my colleague and Nobel laureate Rob Engel, which now has a there's a branch of the volatility lab in NYU Shanghai also. And I guess big data uh, analytics, uh, mining data sets, as you as you put it, is has crept into the risk management discussion. The statistics department generally uh, has people who are very involved with big data. We haven't quite figured out how to incorporate that those sort of special meaning of big data, you know, with um, um, neural networks and machine learning into the risk management program. I mean, we do use a lot of visualization methods. Uh, but, you know, coming from a statistics background, we will try to communicate uh, analysis through visualization. Visualization as a big data technique is actually not just a big data technique. It's been around for a long time is sort of what we've tried to use. In our risk management program, the integration of big data into risk management is in its infancy, but it's a program that's changing very rapidly. As I said, it's a very dynamic program. So if, you'd, if you were to ask me the same question in five years, we'd have probably succeeded in integrating quite a bit of uh, the material in. Right now, big data is, to a considerable extent, a buzzword. I think everyone's trying to figure out how, how best to work it into the system in an educational sense. Does the concept predictive analytics resonate in these contexts? Predictive analytics to me is more like technical analysis where you're really not using maybe a model for a distribution. Everything is driven by, by patterns in the data. Now, predictive analytics to me is, is smacks of overfitting. I think there's a great risk of overfitting because you keep trying on the in-sample period to find the best fitting model. And if you try enough times, you'll find, the, you'll find a very good fitting model. But it's out of sample, sharp ratio could be null. And it's in-sample, 
shop ratio could be very high. So a colleague uh, of mine once I, wrote in a paper that if you torture the data long enough, it will confess. <laughs> there you um, go. In a sense, I think of it as lazy analytics, that you're not doing enough of thinking, you're letting the data do the thinking for you. There is a value to looking at the data, there's immense value to looking at the data, but one should not stop there or even close to it. <laughs>